First, the obvious one is drink more water, because when you drink water, the water, your body, because of the energy, um, infrared energy that's inside and outside, your body converts that some of that water to easy water. So your cells will, any cells that might have been deficient in the amount of easy water uh, should should build up. So that's that's one. The second is um, uh, the second is, is juicing. So you you know about juicing, but not everybody does. And you know, by juicing, we're talking about going into your backyard, taking some of the plants that are growing, the nice fresh green leaves, and and others, and and squeezing out the juice and uh, grinding it um, to smithereens and extracting the juice and drinking the juice. So what is that juice? Well, those freshly grown plant cells, um, they're healthy and inside each one of those cells is easy water, the same as inside of our cells. And so you're squeezing out a lot of easy water and you're drinking the easy water. And by drinking the easy water, you're essentially bypassing the step of having to convert water into easy water because it's already there. And uh, my understanding from a, a lot of practitioners is, is that patients come with this or another problem and they're advised to, uh, to um, enjoy the fruits, so to speak, of, of juicing. And somehow they come back a few months later and they're better. Whatever was afflicting them has seemed to have retreated into the background and they're doing better. Um, and they've also um, side effect lost weight for whatever reason. Okay, so that's the second thing that anybody, anybody can do. Um, a third, a third thing is um, uh, expose yourself to sunlight. Right. And, um, you know, your situation in UK is not so different from the situation that we experience in the Northwest here in, in the Seattle uh, area. We, we have a lot of winter gloom. <laughs> the sun doesn't peek through. And when the sun does peek through, uh, you look outside and, and look at the people walking by. Inevitably, they have smiles on their faces. <laughs> they feel good. And uh, the sun is out. Wow, beautiful. And what's going on? Well, the usual interpretation is, is um, uh, psychologically based uh, interpretation. They see the light of day, something comes through, and you know, after that dark gloom feels good. And that certainly might be true, but there's a, another uh, interpretation. Remember, I said that the sun contains roughly half of the energy from the sun is in the infrared region, and that region builds easy water. So when, when, the sun, um, when the sun hits your, your head, your face, whatever, um, you know, it imparts infrared energy, which means that it, it's, it's going to build easy water in the cells of your brain. And some of the wavelengths do get through, and the evidence for that is you can actually um, take, a, a, um, you can actually do imaging of the brain that way. You can take an infrared source and the infrared energy uh, goes through the skull into the brain, gets scattered, gets picked up again by a sensor and by a, a computer algorithm, you can get an image of what's inside the brain. So it must, the energy must get through two times uh, and the sun's energy will be the same. So an alternative possibility is that just by going out in the sun, you're imparting um, energy to, to the brain um, uh, and you feel good. Um, because the easy water builds up and your cells are then behaving in the way that they were, you might say, designed to, <laughs> to behave. And the, the default situation is feeling good, not feeling depressed. <laughs> okay. Now, the fourth, that's the third one. The fourth is similar to that, but it's done artificially, in a sense, by immersing yourself into a sauna, or as the Finns would say, a sauna, um, um, and what, so what, what are you doing? Um, um, well, you're immersing yourself in, into heat and heat is essentially the same as infrared energy. So your body, your body is, is um, being infused by infrared 
energy uh, is coming in all over your body. And what do we know about infrared energy? Well, it builds easy water. Therefore, if you have a deficiency of easy water, whether it's in your brain or your muscle or your rear end or your left leg, uh, it, it, the energy is going to build easy water. And um, the easy water buildup will convert dysfunction into function. So if you have a, a muscle ache or something, or a, a, um, you know any, any kind of issue with, with your cell, there's some chance that the um, dysfunction will be reversed simply by exposing yourself to infrared energy in that way. And I think many people experience it. I remember myself at a conference in Finland, way north in Finland, above the Arctic Circle. Um, and I was there just at the time it was um, you know, daylight for almost 24 hours. It was quite an interesting I experience. And you know, I had to give a seminar uh, uh, presentation and I was suffering serious jet lag. I gave the presentation and I was really tired. And, you know, then the evening there was a banquet. So of course I went to the banquet. It was at some remote location and there was good food and um, a few pleasant um, uh, talks and uh, whatever. And then I was, all I wanted to do was to get back to the hotel to get to sleep because I was just so tired. And the uh, organizer of the conference walks up to the microphone. And I was sure that he was going to announce, okay, the doors of the bus are open. You can get back. We'll take you back to your hotel. He said, the saunas are now open. <laughs> uh, and we got three of them. One of them is dry. One of them is moist. And the other is, I don't remember what. You had your choice. Uh, and I thought, oh, sh excuse me. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know, I don't, but I, I guess I succumbed because as did many of the people. And I sat in there uh, for 20 minutes or so. And I remember the aftermath, I took my shower, got out of there. And it was, it was as though I had a good night's sleep. I, you know, I, uh, I was ready, raring to go. I couldn't, I couldn't believe the transition. Um, from before and after. And I think that's not a atypical. So it's essentially the infrared energy builds easy, um, changes any kind of dysfunction into function. Well, perhaps not any kind, but it certainly goes in that direction. Okay, that was four. Uh, number five, substances that have been known throughout the ages, um, throughout the ages to to um, be good for health. And, and many of them come from the Ayurvedic tradition, you know, 5,000 years ago or even, even earlier that are carried on even, even to this day. So for example, turmeric is, is one of those. And, you know, a lot of people know that uh, if you take turmeric, uh, you got a problem, whether it's your left ear or your right toe, um, it's gonna help uh, or anywhere in between. You know, and and um, the tradition in India, the ancient tradition says that will be the case. And we we wondered how how can it be that one agent can have so many um, effects throughout the body? So there are two hypotheses that you can think of. One is that well, somehow you have turmeric receptors in every organ throughout your body. It doesn't seem so likely, right? Um, and the other one is that. Um, the turmeric impacts a certain substance that that then exists throughout the body, one, one substance. And that, of course, is water, because water is everywhere. So if turmeric had an impact, if turmeric built easy water, all of that might be explainable, because the water is everywhere, right? Um, and, and we tested that, and we, we tested that um, by using that same experimental preparation that I began uh, to talk about um, at the beginning of our conversation. And you put a little turmeric in it. Well, it's a bit more sophisticated than put a little turmeric. But basically, you put a little turmeric in and it builds easy water. The easy that you saw got bigger. Um, and, and, and that existed over a broad range of concentration that would be relevant to the concentration that might be in your body. Uh -huh. 
No, we established that for turmeric, but not only turmeric. There, there are um, other substances known to be generally good for health, uh, positive for health. Every one of the ones that we tried um, uh, built easy water. And, uh, and they, they included um, uh, basil, so-called holy basil. They included aspirin, which as you know, comes from the bark of the willow tree. Um, included aspirin, uh, that I, as I as mentioned, and and um, and several other uh, substances um, that were generally good for health. And you know, the 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 queen of all of them uh, turned out to 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 be a ghee, you know, clarified butter, which again has been used in the Ayurvedic tradition um, for thousands of years and it's still used by uh, uh, people in, in India. And you could measure an exclusion zone next to ghee, ghee being the nucleating surface that was almost a millimeter. And we, we published that. So anyway, the point is that for number five, <laughs> that, that what you can do um, to build easy water in your body is to ingest some of these substances which have been known for years to be good for health, but we now understand perhaps what the underlying mechanism might be, simple buildup of easy water. So that's five, and let me just end with a, a sixth one. There are a few more, but you know, we gotta be reasonable. Um, um, and that is connecting yourself to the earth. So yeah, you nod your head because you of course know all about that, but um, so it's, it's been known that if you connect yourself electrically to the earth, you feel better. Um, and that's been studied now for uh, quite a while by uh, quite a num number of people trying to figure out what, what the mechanism is. And I'd like to suggest to you a simple mechanism um, that has to do thematically with, with the same. But, um, but you know, um, for example, if you if you do that, if you if you walk, if you take off your shoes and socks and walk on the beach near the water, it feels good, um, you know. And the question is, why does it feel good? And um, and I got to interject with an experience that I can never forget. Uh, I was a kid, and growing up in uh, in Brooklyn, uh, New York, where we have a beach. Uh, uh, Brighton Beach, the name is familiar to you, being in the UK, but we, we, we copy. Um, and, uh, you know, in the summertime, all the kids and families would be um, blanket to blanket. <laughs> there, you almost couldn't walk from the, from the city to the water because <laughs> of the concentration of bodies <laughs> over there. Anyway, I was there with friends and, and we were having fun and we would bury one another in the sand right near the water. And I was the final victim. They buried me up to my neck, allowing me to continue living at least for some time. And what I remember is a feeling that I could only call bliss. It felt so good. And when finally it came time to leave, um, I didn't want to leave uh, because this feeling, I mean, it, it was so incredibly intense that I remember it to this day. That's how intense it was. And I don't remember too much about my childhood to this day, but I remember that feeling of bliss. It was unmistakable. And again, I was connecting myself to the earth. So what's going on? Well, what's going on, uh, I think, um, which follows the story I've been telling you is, is that it builds easy water. And let me explain how. Um, and, and the how is that the earth, which we think of as a neutral body, is not neutral. Um, I, started, I started my um, uh, education career studying electrical engineering. And so you'd think that I would start, learn something about you know, the elect electrical behavior of the earth, but no professor ever mentioned to me um, the fact that the earth was not neutral, but negatively charged. No professor ever taught me or even mentioned that if you, if you um, uh, take the, the, the electrical plug and plug it into a socket, that extra third prong um, connects to a vast sea of electrically negative charge. Uh, whoever heard of such a thing? 
But I heard about it when a Russian guy was in my laboratory and um, started talking about the electric field of the earth. I said, Andre, you're talking about the magnetic field, right? No, 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 I'm talking about the electric field. And my response, I never heard of such a thing. You know, I grew up in the electrical engineering and I never heard of electric field around the earth. He said, well, your education was deficient because in Russia, even middle school students <laughs> know that the earth is negatively charged, you know, and uh, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I, I, next morning, um, I came back um, and one of my students handed me the famous lectures of the Nobel laureate Richard Feynman, you know, considered to be the Einstein of the second half of the 20th century. And his volumes of physics, three volumes, are famous. Uh, uh, I, I would venture to say that most, if not almost all, graduate students in physics, in the US at least, read his lectures. They're funny, they're clear, etc. And he was a professor at Caltech. And so the student hands me volume two, chapter nine. Um, and in that chapter, it, it presents all the evidence for the negative charge of the earth. So, and it was plentiful and certainly convinced me. So what's going on is if you connect yourself electrically by any, of, any number of means um, um, to the earth, uh, what happens is you're connecting yourself electrically to a practically infinite supply of negative charge. So the negative charge is the easy water. If you don't have enough negative charge or enough easy water in one of your cells leading to dysfunction, you connect yourself electrically to the earth and those negative charges come running in to, to create easy water. We know from laboratory uh, experiments that you, you you take water, you put negative charge into that water and around that negative charge, easy builds from that negative charge. It, uh, the negative charge converts the water into easy water, which is negatively charged, and you get a buildup of that. So I think a, a simple, I'm sorry it went on for so long, but a simple explanation um, for the health benefits of connecting yourself to the earth uh, derives from the, negative charge that runs in from the earth to your body, building easy water and improving function. That's, that's my hypothesis as to why, um, why taking off your shoes and walking on the wet grass is good for you, or hugging a tree, or however you're connecting yourself to a plate, um, an aluminum plate that's in turn connected to the earth why all of those maneuvers will be, will be beneficial for health. So I've listed a half dozen um, different um, uh, courses of action, um, each of which I, I think is known to improve health. And I also think that the mechanism has to do with the buildup of easy water in cells that might for some reason um, be, be lacking easy water